Alrighty, so here we go. It's time to do my annual tradition where every single year since I start covering MLS and even before when I talk about the San Jose Earthquakes most of the time on my channel, that I look at the, the season schedule. And as I said yesterday, what's interesting about this season schedule is that pretty much every single team is going to have most of their games that's going to be happening on Saturday and Wednesday and the kickoff time will be 7.30 p.m local time and likewise for the quakes pretty much most of their game is going to be kicking off at 7 30 and that i think there's only two games that it's not going to be on saturday and uh wednesday i think there's only two that's going to be happening on sunday and i believe there's also only going to be two games that is actually not going to happen at 7 30 p.m as the kickoff time and of course that does not include decision day which we still don't know when exactly uh the time is going to be for decision day but we start off uh, with the first game where the Quakes are actually going to be going on the road for their first game. They're going to be playing against Atlanta United on the road at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I believe this is only the second time that the Quakes have been gone on the road uh, since 2015. Because the Quakes always tend to start their their games at, at home as their first ever matchup. And that I also believe this is probably the first time since... Um, uh, it's been a while. I remember last time that the Quakes have started on the road and it's against an Eastern Conference team because I know the last time that they started on the road in 2021, uh, they were playing against the, the Houston Dynamo. And again, that was really the first time the Quakes actually started the season on the road uh, ever since PayPal Park uh, was opened back in 2015 where the Quakes had to, to be be waiting for their first ever home game on week number three of the season. So, yeah, that's going to be an interesting kind of game against Atlanta United on the road. I mean, this is, I think, only the second time that the Quakes have played Atlanta uh, on the road. Last time, though, yeah, they did not win that one, but that was a game where, oh, man, I feel like they could have got a draw out of that game, but they gave up two late goals to lose that one, and, you know, obviously Atlanta has kind of changed ever since that, that, that day, and we'll see whether they can be up for the task in, in that game. Now, they, of course, then play against the Vancouver Whitecaps at 7.30 p.m. Pacific, and it's going to be a Saturday game, too. In fact, we actually won't have a midweek game that the Quakes will be playing until uh, the end of May. It's actually May 31st will be the first first uh, midweek games that the Quakes, of course, has had. So, you know, MLS, they're trying their best in terms of, you know, trying not to have a lot of these team play midweek games. But at the, at the same time, you know, I think this season, let's see, we got one... Uh, two, three, uh, four midweek games that the Quakes, of course, uh, will be playing. Now, after that, they play against the Colorado Rapids at the same time before going on the road to play against the expansion team St. Louis SC at 7.30 p.m. Pacific. And then they return home the very next day playing against Toronto FC and then at home against the Houston Dynamo. So when I look at the start of the schedule for the Quakes, it's pretty easy. I mean, it's a pretty easy schedule schedule to start off the season i can definitely see see that there could could be a chance where the quakes can get off to a good start i mean the game against atlanta that's going to be be tough because you know the thing about about the quakes on the road they tends to not do very well but with the way that you know the the first uh what one two three four five six the first six games of the season four of them is going to be at at paypal park uh, against teams that you know i think besides maybe toronto fc and you know we don't know know uh with T tfc uh whether whether or not if they can can booster their their defense and and could be a competitor in the eastern conference again but other than that i can definitely see that they can get three points in all these games i mean they i definitely can see that they can get a win against the white caps because historically they have done well against the white caps at home in the same case with the the colorado rapids uh same case uh uh with st st louis where yes it's a road game but you know expansion team they tend to t take a while to get get thing things going uh tfc they can definitely get get a reserve because they have a good hit good record and then against the houston dynamo that might be the team that they could could kind of struggle because they have a kind of struggle against that team both home and away though i think that was a couple of years ago now that they have done much better against the dynamo when they're playing at home now the very next game they have to go on the road to play against the the new york red bulls and if the red bulls are going to be like last season where they struggle at red bull arena um maybe the quakes will get a chance but again it's a road game which means it's going to be 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 tough and then they have to play against sporting kc at home before going on the road to play rsl and austin fc so there's no doubt the schedule does get get harder in april 
But boy, it's about to get get even harder as we get into May because here we go with the 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 triple little LA kind of matchup that the Quakes will be endure. Uh, they of course will will play against LEFC at home, and it's actually not going to be at PayPal Park. It's actually going to be at Levi Stadium, and I believe this is the first time since what 2015 that the Quakes, of course, have played at Levi Stadium. I think the last game that they played uh, at Levi Stadium was against Orlando City, but they have not played at that stadium or at least in an mls game i know that they have played at levi's before uh, it was against manchester united and i went to that one back in like 28 18 but in terms of mls game they have not played at, at levi stadium so that should be be fun to see it's a 4 30 p.m pacific start which again yeah because of the fact that it's a it's kind of like a, a late afternoon start and i actually don't like the fact that it's a late afternoon start because you know i know it's it's may but it can still get very hot during that time and one of the thing thing that i hate about levi stadium is the heat uh the heat could be be a, an issue in in this one or at least maybe that's what what the quakes decided they maybe want to play against lafc not in a prime time game but just a game in the heat so that they can they can get advantage of, of that but again in terms of fan experience that's not going to be be fun and also not to mention you know there's no guarantee that i could actually make it to the game because i get off work at 2 30 in the afternoon and i know for a fact that going to levi stadium it can be a nightmare to get get in to it uh whether it's public transportation or even driving to the game itself now uh on sunday uh the Qu quakes uh are going to be going on the road to play against the other LA team, the Galaxy, and this one is actually going to be on national television on FS1. In fact, this is actually the only national televised game the Quakes are going to have, and this is also one of those rare games that it's not going to start at 7.30. It actually starts at 6.30 p.m. Pacific, but then after that, they go on, on the road and they get to play the other LA team. I mean, in some way, they probably should just stay in LA if they're going to play two LA team back to back on the road and this one is going to be a 7 30 p.m pacific time and again i wonder when the league decided to choose this kind of schedule maybe they were using this as a way to kind of minimize the the travel but if that is the case i feel like they could have just done, done like a midweek kind of thing where they can have the quakes play midweek against lafc and then on the weekend they can play against the la galaxy and they'll find a way to maybe find an area to train so that they don't have to kind of go back and forth and back and forth and so so forth now uh on may 27th uh they have fc dallas at 7 30 p.m pacific and they finish the 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 schedule of may by going on the road against the seattle sounders so yeah pretty much in may they play all the good good teams that finish well in the western conference and that this is again why in the beginning of the season they have to get off to a good start and that makes me ner nervous whenever uh i I, t I see the quakes get, get uh, an easy schedule to start off because you know the quakes they recently i feel like they had that tendency of getting off to slow start which is kind of odd because i think back when i first started watching this team in 2013 and 2014 even 2015 during the dominic kinnear era this was a team that tends to start off where very well and then they basically faded away to a way where they they were no longer in playoff contention and i feel like they need to do that again this season if they want to have a shot all of the the playoffs they need to get off to a good start because of the way that there's going to be a murderous row in that that may schedule like i will not be surprised doing this stretch they they could not get it get get very few points out out of this stretch because i can't imagine Jin, they can i mean they can maybe get get points on the road against the galaxy they have done done well at least at at that place for for a while but on the road against lafc a place that they've only won one ones and the same goes with the seattle sounders on the road which at least you know recently they have gone a little bit better against the sounders on, on the road i mean they did get a draw on decision day in the last game and then they pull off a shock one nothing win uh before that but yeah you know that that is a really tough tough ske schedule to to look like look at and i think the only win i can see say they that could could maybe be be a one that they have the best chance is against fc see dallas at at home uh they have always done well uh against da dallas when they play at home now uh after that they will go on the road to play against the colorado rapids so again doesn't get any easier because the quakes have always tends to struggle against the uh, the colorado rapids on the road it's been a long time since they have been able to get a win 
on the road against Colorado. And then to make it even tougher, they have to play against the, the defending Eastern Conference champion that is the Philadelphia Union. At least this time, it's going to be at, at home and not on the road. And speaking of which, the very next game, they have to play against the Portland Timbers. So again, the schedule is going to be really rough during this part of time. But it does get kind of easier, well, depending on the fact that if you count uh, on the road against the Houston Dynamo as the easy game because... You know, whenever the Quakes play on the road against the Dynamo, it's usually an automatic L because of the way that I don't think they have actually even won a single game against the, the Dynamo on the road. And that's kind of kind of odd too because, you know, the Dynamo, I think this is going to be a team that's going to be rebuilding. But they always just, whenever they play the Quakes, they always find ways to win just like la last season when they were able to win that 4-3 thriller kind of game and also not to mention the fact that you know this is also the second Wednesday game and again uh you, you look at uh the the Wednesday and Saturday game here where they have to go on the road to Seattle and then go on the road against Colorado and then when we get to these kind of seven seven uh days in three game stretch it's going to really test the fitness of, of this team now after that they of course are going to be playing against St. Louis on June 24th now that's kind of interesting because normally that week is specifically reserved for the, the Cali Classical at Stanford Stadium. And that I think this year, the Cali Classical is going to be a week late later on July 1st uh, at Stanford for Stadium. And I think this is actually the first Cali Classical at Stanford that I remember it actually taking place in July. Obviously, remember la last year, that Cali Classical didn't happen until September because of the whole power out the ch situation that happened back in June. And let's just hope that that's not going to be the case again because i really think that that you know when that game was taking place in september when the quakes actually only lost their second cali classico at stanford stadium they were already eliminated like they had nothing to to play play for against a team that had everything to play for and it just kind of it doesn't it didn't really felt 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 like like a cali classico and i guess maybe that's why why the players weren't weren't up for it because man the quakes were pretty bad when they were playing against the galaxy at a rate where I've seen some bad bad Quakes team play against the Ga Galaxy at Stanford Stadium, and even then they they didn't have that 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 uh, they didn't play as badly as I saw last season. And again, a lot of that has to do with the fact that they were already eliminated. They were already thinking about what they're going to do in the all, off season, and this is why the Cali Classical taking place in the middle of the season. It's a perfect time because that's when we when uh, it's it's a perfect time to to realize are the Quakes are going to be be real only for for real uh, in terms of being contending. For, for the playoffs uh but after that uh you, you know we talk about the the la kind, kind of swing that we have in may we kind of we'll see a little mini mini kind of la swing too in july with them playing against the other la team team uh on the road this time uh they're going to be playing on out against lafc in fact uh that's actually going to be the third matchup that they're going to be playing against lafc in this season it seems like the quakes are going to be played against the la team free time as I mentioned yesterday uh one of the thing about about uh this season with western conference team and because of the fact that there's an even uh western conference team with st louis coming into the league is that you're going to have have a situation where you're going to have to play one team team or two teams three times a season and it seems like like the quakes are going to have lafc or the la team as the one to that they're going to be playing playing three times which I don't know. If that's a good thing because you know, again, you, know, you especially when you have to face against the defending champ three times. I mean, that's going to be very, very interesting. But uh, after that, it uh, doesn't get easier for them. They have to play at home against the the Seattle Sounders, and that actually pretty much finish up in terms of what I would say. I mean, it, another thing that's kind of interesting about this season is that we get that that uh, month long break. Uh, because of the League Cup that has happened, and it's almost feel like I, I want to say that's kind of like, like uh, in the beginning is like phase one of the the season, and then phase two of the season. You know how how uh, when you see some some other leagues in Europe, they kind of have like two different phases, and even some some uh, leagues in down in Latin America, you have like the Apertura season and the Clausura season. I feel like that's kind of kind of started to become the case, even though I know that's not the official name for it. You have like the the the, the opening season then before we have that League Cup break and then we have the closing season in the latter stretch. But as we get to the latter stretch and pick up in terms of action once again uh, on August 20th, they have to go on the road to play against the Vancouver Whitecaps and that's actually going to be a Sunday game again. One of only two games that the Quakes are going to be playing 
on Sunday. Uh, I'll follow that. They have to go on the road against Sporting K KC, and then they have to play at home against the Galaxy, and then at home against Minnesota. So again, you know that's that's okay. I think that that stretch could could be a stretch where they could could get some points. I mean, on the road against Sporting KC might be the one that they might not actually get any points, but it's doable in terms of the all the other other games that they they will be be playing. And then of course after that they go on the road against DC United before uh, playing at home against RSL. So again, just like how the the start of of the season uh, with the way that after the League Cup break is over, uh, the start of that final stretch of the season actually is relatively e easy, and that the Quakes could actually get get something out of it. But then of course it does gets a little bit tougher because after that that they have to. Uh, on Wednesday, they have to play against the Portland Timbers on the road. That's an automatic L because the Quakes have never beat the Timbers uh, on the road in their franchise history. Then they, of course, play against Nashville at home. And this is, of course, one of the, I think, six teams that they're going to be playing in the Eastern Conference. I think I already met, mentioned uh, a couple of them with, uh, I think, D.C. Being, being one of the team. And if I look at here, Toronto being one of the team, Atlanta being one of the team, and Philly being one of the, the team. And then they go on the road to play against Minnesota at Allianz Field on September 30th before they have to go on the road again to play against FC Dallas and they finish the season against Austin FC. So again, this is very reminiscent of kind of like the 2019 season where down the stretch they have a really tough tough road to, to, to finish off. And that again, you know, the way I look at the Quakes th this season, it's kind of almost the same with with last year where there's just so much mis mystery and that I don't know are they of course ready to to be be considered a playoff contender. I think what maybe could 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 lies on whether or not if this team could be a contender is the fact that can Lucci Gonzalez fix the the defensive problem that this team faced last season because I think it's pretty clear that the strength of this team has been on the attack attacking front but the defense has just looked a lot to, to desire and that if they if uh, Luchi Gonzalez can at least patch that up in a, a bit where they can still not really I mean I think they'll probably maybe sacrifice some some of that attacking pa power because I know during time when Luchi Gonzalez was the head coach of FC Dallas he does at times become a little bit def defensive and play a more defensive formation uh and at times you know that kind of frustrates Dallas fans because they were kind of playing some boring soccer but in this case you know I feel like they kind of have to because, again, the Quakes haven't really made any reinforcement at, at the back um, this offseason. And that's something... I mean, I know they did kind of do that during the the, the secondary transfer window, but I just feel like it's still not not in, enough in a way where I can consider this team to be a playoff contender. And again, you know, this this team, you know, it's 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 kind of a situation where, you know, you know, for the past couple of years, there's a pattern where they tend to make the playoffs and then they just completely drop off. And then they made the playoffs again and they, they completely drop off. Well, last season, they completely dropped dropped off. So maybe this is the season that they make make the playoffs again. Uh, I don't I don't know. So we'll, we'll see how that that is going to go. But one thing I will say that if the Quakes want to get themselves into playoff uh, contender and want to be considered a contender in the Western Conference, they have to get off to a good start. I mean, that start of the season where I already mentioned how it's it's a very easy start to the season. If they don't don't get off to a good start, then I think we can kiss the the playoff hope, hopes goodbye. Even though I know normally you don't want to count out a team uh, in the beginning of the season, but just look at the with the way that the schedule has had and that we have seen before. When you of course get off to a start slow start, you can basically have to find a way to play catch up. And last season, the Quakes were playing catch up for most part of the season, and that that they just never able to, to overcome the disastrous class that Mateus Almeida basically put this team in such a deep hole to begin the season. But there you have it. That is pretty much it in terms of looking at the 2023 San Jose Earthquake season. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of this video, and let me know in the comments below if you're a, a Quakes fan like myself. You know which game are you looking forward to most? I mean, for me, obviously it's got to be the Cal. Cali Clasco, you know every time when there's a Cali Clasco, I will definitely be be looking forward to, to that. But besides that, that you know, let me know in the comments below what other game that you might be be looking forward to. I mean, I know some Quakes fans will say this will be a good game that they're looking forward to get to play at Levi's Stadium 
against LAFC, but we'll see. We'll, 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 we'll let me know in the comments below what do you, you think, think is the matchup that you, you're looking forward to the most of the Quakes will be playing this season. But yeah, until then, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash the subscribe button, and yeah, I, of course, will see you guys next time.